Hey guys, John Paulamy here. Uh, Thursday, July 16th. Wanted to give you a short video, uh, some more information. Something I was looking at today. I was cleaning up some pictures in my uh, hard drive, and this kind of sparked an idea that I wanted to talk about. You know, a lot of times people say they can't value gold. Why do people buy gold? It's a doorstop, things like that. One of the things I wanted to point out, though, is this is a chart that I um, saw. And you see way back, here's a Bloomberg chart that somebody put up on Twitter. But if you look way back here, 2010 to 2014, uh, and then you get the 2015 to 2019. This is the total amount of debt worldwide in trillions of dollars that has a negative yield. So, you know, it, we didn't see too much of it, like barely any zero between 2010 and 2014. And then we had this explosion in negative rates, right? Because all of the things that the central bankers are doing are not working to stimulate the economy. They're the, the old thing of just cutting rates um, and uh, increasing reserves in the banking system, it wasn't working. So, you know, now they've tried in Japan and many other places negative rates. And the reason I bring up negative rates is twofold. First of all, I mean, who's buying government debt of any of these governments and getting a negative return? Well, uh, a lot of it is sometimes it's traders because they're a greater fool, right? If, if things go more negative, then you get an actual capital gain. But in many cases, pension funds, insurance companies, I mean, a lot of... Entities, financial entities that manage money are mandated by their mandate to have a certain amount of government debt, which is considered risk-free. And I say that with italics. I mean, would you loan any of these Western democracies, the United States, Canada, Australia, Germany, Italy, Spain, would you loan these people money for 30 years at basically negative rates? Who's doing this? It's absurd, uh, but people are doing it for many reasons. So I want to set that stage. You know, we have a record now, um, you know, closing on $14 trillion in negative yielding debt. And apparently it's going to get worse because of the coronavirus, because of the self-imposed um, economic lockdown that we've had that's caused basically a, a, a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And the reason I bring negative yields up is because negative yields are one of the primary drivers long-term of gold prices. This is an older chart. I was cleaning up my chart decks in my hard drive, and I ran across at this. It's a little bit older. It goes back to uh, January of 2019, so the gold price is much higher, obviously, but the amount of the negative rates are also lower. Let me explain this when I'm talking about real interest rates. So look at zero right here. You have the zero across here. You have positive real rates, and then you have negative real rates. Yeah, this is the actual interest rate, real rate, interest rate in red, as you can see going back to January 1971 when we came off the gold standard. This uh, obviously in yellow is the gold price. What I want you to notice is there have been times, primarily in the 70s, uh, two times where we have massive negative real interest rates. What are real interest rates? Real interest rates are basically different ways of measuring it, but typically the U.S. 10-year Treasury rate minus the inflation rate gives you a real interest rate. So people, obviously, you know, they say, well, I'm getting 3% or I'm getting 2.5% on a bond or whatever, but that's a nominal return. That is what you're getting nominally. What is your real return? Because you have to factor in inflation, right? Because remember, the currency is being slowly depreciated uh, by the central bank over time. So if you have an inflation rate like we did, we had high inflation in the 70s, um, you may be seeing an interest rate on T-bills of 10, 12, 14 percent, but the, but the um, inflation rate may have been higher. So like we have today, I mean, you can, we have real negative interest rates right now because the inflation rate, even with measured with the CPI, is higher than the rate that you can get on treasuries. And I suspect that's going to continue because of the suppression of interest rates that the Federal Reserve is going to have to do to accommodate the debt expansion. And, and obviously, um, people are not stupid, especially people in the financial markets. 
Um, a lot of retail investors are stupid, but or not shouldn't say stupid. They're ignorant. So one of the knocks on holding gold is it doesn't have a re- it doesn't have a yield. It doesn't yield anything. There's no dividends or interest paid. However, if you're in a situation where holding treasuries, your real rate of return is negative, like in 1975, like in the uh, period um, in the Carter administration where you had real interest rates down at negative 6%, you see that the gold price reacted. Why? Because if you're, if you're getting a negative real yield, um, now gold can compete as an asset class because it can preserve purchasing power, right? If you're buying government bonds in an era of higher inflation, you're losing purchasing power. You're, you're losing value. So that's why people gravitate to gold. Look at what happened uh, in the last gold bull market we had from basically um, 2001 to uh, 2011. We had you know, a period of sustained long-term, I mean, we had some bumps in the road here where we got some positive rates, but we had considerable time spent in negative real rates, okay? And then we recovered, uh, rates went positive or bumped ahead. They were, they, the trend was towards positive rates, so therefore the gold price um, headed down because it was more, it was more, uh, advantageous to own those treasuries. Uh, so what we're seeing again now is with these with this negative debt around the world already negative and then you add in uh, some type of purchasing power loss because of the rising cost of living, which I anticipate to get worse because of all the money, uh, currency unit creation plus all the supply disruptions we're seeing in various commodities. Um, that's why you're going to see the gold price move higher. That's, now, that's not the only driver, but it's one of the primary drivers. Uh, I'm hoping I'm explaining this. I'm trying to keep these videos uh, shorter, and I'm hoping to explain this correctly. But take a look at the correlation between, or the inverse correlation between real interest rates and the gold price. And I think you'll find that when we have real negative interest rates, the gold price moves contra to that. So uh, something to keep in mind, uh, we are... We are going to be looking at decades, we have to be, as, of um, lower rates. The government's going to have to suppress, the Fed's going to have to suppress interest rates because the U.S. government treasury's debts are exploding. I mean, you cannot, in a real free market, uh, the market would demand higher rates based on this debt expansion because it would say, look, you're putting at risk, you're, you know, it's like any other debtor. Hey, you're going nuts with your credit cards. We're going to raise the rate interest rates on you because the risk of being paid back is going up. But when you have the Federal Reserve in there manipulating rates, buying treasuries, becoming the market, you get into that financial suppression. And that's how they steal, that's how you increase income inequality, that's how you steal wealth from people, right? You buy real goods and services with with less and less valuable currency units. You know, it's just like, I kind of use the analogy of the baseball card market in the 90s. You know, I'm a big collector of, of these cards, investment grade cards, Gem Mint 10, PSA graded cards. And you'll notice that when we got into the early 90s, starting from like 90 on, I mean, they just printed these things by the billions. And so you don't see the value because there's no scarcity. What causes the value of those older cards uh, from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s is the scarcity factor. The, there's not a lot of cards available in excellent, you know, near mint mint condition. When you get into the 90s and billions of these things were created, uh, there's a plethora of cards that are mint, and it just, just there's not scarcity value. And it's the same thing with currency. The more currency you print, the more currency units you create, makes every existing currency unit less valuable. This all ties in. So you don't necessarily need inflation, massive inflation for gold. What you need is negative rates real rates. And think about that when people talk about buying a bond, a uh, certificate of confiscation is what I call them because inflation just uh, eats away at your returns. You're, you, know, you, you have to understand the terms nominal returns and real returns. Nominal returns are the returns without taking into account inflation. Uh, real returns are your returns minus the inflation rate. So if you have, uh, like again, these yields being so low or in many cases negative already, and then you add inflation in there, now you have this extreme where you're well below the zero uh, return real interest rates 
you have negative real interest rates, and that makes gold very, very favorable because it can compete as an investment um, uh, category. So uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, put out these shorter videos, bite size, and in shorter amounts of time, but uh, wanted to bring this to your attention. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you next time.